everyone. Welcome to the Straw Family Farm Take Two. I'm Christy. Today in the chapel we've got Psalms 56, 4. In God, whose word I praise, in God I trust, I will not be afraid. How can mortal man, or what can mortal man do to me? So pretty much just, again, concentrating this January on trusting him, knowing him, and, you know, having a closer relationship with him. So. All right. So I've come up with two little sections. Um, I'm not creative. You know, I've always done the whole, RJ set up the podcast and it was off the hook, uh, on, uh, totally hooked, on the hooks, um, that kind of stuff in the fields with the gardening stuff. And so this week, I have come up with the first of the two categories that we're going to do. And one is off the machine. Okay. And I always start with anything that I've completed. <coughs> well, you guys didn't see this at all from the start. So at work, we have a little Valentine's day exchange, just like you used to have. It's a team building exercise and you're told make a box or a bag. Okay. So you knew I was going to do it with fabric. This is a shoe box and I literally made a bag and slid it over it. So from the red down and it's folded up underneath there. I don't know how much you can see, but yeah, it's folded underneath there so that when I take this off, I'm going to stitch this. Now this is just safety pin and then tape up here. Okay. So I want to be able to reuse this. This is just a flap. Let me show you here. It's, it's just this. It's sewed and these actually um, are rounded, but I didn't round them. <laughs> yeah. So um, it is what it is, but I am going to make it a drawstring bag when I get done. So it's taped on there. It is tucked and it is, and I literally went into my, um, material, my tote that has my material in it and found the little heart material and this red, red was for Christmas, the little hearts. I don't even remember what we were doing with it, but yeah, so this is my little box and I just made a heart and then put this and this is just a folded up piece of paper with my name on it. <laughs> I know I'm not very creative for labeling it, but this will be a gift bag when it, when the box comes out because literally I just, I squared up the edges. Um, it doesn't take a whole lot to do that, but I haven't even trimmed them off. They're still tucked up underneath there. So yeah. Um, just a bag, you know me, bags are kind of my go-to thing. So I made that and that is totally off the machine. Um, then I did not work on any of the bags. I, I, I pinned a couple, so I don't know what you'd call that. And then, um, so I started with, um, this is this section because nothing is finished is called on the cutting table. So on the table, I have this green stocking that I've done. Now the, the cup is just um, pinned on there. So I made the first one and it has the French seam in it. Just like I said, I was going to do. Okay. But uh, there it is right there. I need to unpin it so y'all can see it better, but there it is. Um, it's very clean on the inside. Great. I think the stocking looks great. This is pinned. This is not in yet, but I'm going to do, you know, each one like this. So it's going to basically look like this. Um, no, they're not because I don't like it. I don't like how thin and flimsy it came out. So <clears throat> I have the other green one that I am going to do. Okay. So that match set will be flimsy. And I think I'm just going to put a couple of crocheted, um, very thin, like embroidery thread, crocheted snowflakes, just randomly placed. I don't know. I know I want to put them kind of across here. Maybe I don't know how many I'll do. None of this snowflakes are going to match, but they're all going to have snowflakes. Okay. So 
I've decided I don't like how thin those are. Should have known better kind of thing. And now I have decided that I have these messed up. Okay, so all right. Anyway, I have my little things all cut and and laid together. Now I've messed up and I don't know what is missing one. So anyway, all right. So I have the blue is here. I've got them all pinned and I am going to line them. Um, if you hold them like this, they're much sturdier. I actually pinned one together and stuck my hand in there and it comes out okay. I thought about putting batting in there and I've decided not to. Um, I don't want them like, real puffy. I want them elegant looking. That's my whole thing is I want them elegant looking. So I have all of them done. I just um, I have all of them pinned and ready to go. I just have to see them outside. And then now the reason that I haven't progressed forward with this is that little old me and all my wisdom, I, uh, I don't know if I'm going to sew on the crocheted snowflakes before I line it that everything's hidden inside but then will it be too weak and not stay where I want it to stay if the snowflake is just on the lining is it going to make it not I mean on the shell is it not going to make the lining stay should I just you know tuck a few seams in on or tuck a few stitches in on like an like embroidery it on to make it look really nice and use the shell and the lining. Ooh, I don't know. I, I just I've got them pinned. I will probably stitch around them and just wait and see because I don't know. And see, this happens on every project because you guys know that I ripped out the dress. It's supposed to be a simple wrap around dress. Okay. Well, then I decided I wanted it just a little different. I decided I was going to have. So, yeah. All right. I have the whole um, mauve colored uh, think of what these are called. Anyway, the outer layer is all seamed. Okay, it's all hemmed. It's rough hemmed. It is not rolled the second time and it's not made to look. Because if you remember, I started out and it was going to be a full skirt. Then I ripped it out and I decided it's going to be, I want it to give me a waistband. So now I have done the center there. Um, I don't know if you can see that very well. Let me hold it up. And, and it's just a little... Um, Thing. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so there it is. This does gather at the top some, so it looks huge, but it's really not. Now, I've got the little V, and I can't decide if I want it to be more to the side or the center. Okay, do y'all have this problem when you start a project? And I used to not have this problem. Okay, I'm not going to give to you. When I was um, sewing for my kids, it was out of necessity. Tori had to have a dress for Christmas play. Um, RJ had to have um, this or that. A Finding Nemo costume, I think, is the most elaborate one that I did. And I made his Nemo and the dad. I made a turtle. I I didn't use a pattern, but pretty much I knew what, I would, what the end game should look like. Okay? Because when you're doing for plays or whatever. So I was very specific knew what the end game was going to be and I stuck to it and I was much faster at sewing. Now I get halfway through and it's like I'm lost. I'm like, Oh, I could do this. Oh, I could do that. I can go to Hobby Lobby 
and purchase within reason material to make any one item. Then I get halfway through it. And I'm like, oh, but I can make it better this way. Why can't I just get it done? I've got three projects on the cutting table. One is the bags, which is, you know, I've got like 40 of those left. Um, the four stockings and the dress. I should be able to finish one of these. Sit down in a weekend and finish one of these projects. <laughs> I keep changing in my mind. Um, I'm not an artist by any means. So sitting down and drawing it out, it's going to look like a three-year-old drew it. With no pattern. Because, again, I just have an idea in my head and I'm like, oh, I'm going to make that. <sighs> Freelance sewing, as I call it, or freestyle sewing, I guess. I should stick to one word. I call my crochet freestyle, so we'll call it freestyle. It has its drawbacks. I don't know. I don't know how designers do it because... I do one thing and like, oh, but it'd be better this way. Oh, but it'd be better this way. I don't know. How do y'all stay on topic with one project? How do you keep your mind? Is this why people insist on using patterns? It's because this is what I'm making. Boom. Here's the pattern. I paid for it. This is what I'm making. Kind of cut and dry thing. Um, how many people have three projects on the cutting board. Now the, the bags I don't consider, you know, a project just because they're ongoing and it's been ongoing for years. And the plan is to get them all done by July. So we know that those are going to be on the cutting table for a while. The stockings, I don't even need them till December, but I've got to have time to make the snowflakes. I've got to decide how many I need. Um, I keep changing what I'm going to do. And so it's like, it's just crazy. I need to stay on task. I, I feel all over the place and I don't know how to deal with it because in my mind, it's like, Oh, I can make it better by doing this. No, you're just ripping out and starting over. So anyway, tell me how y'all deal with that because you know, do you still have that problem? Um, and like I said, this problem has only come about since my kids aren't here to dictate what I need to sew. Um, yeah, speaking of that, my kids dictating. So RJ also brought me his mending today, so, or today, this weekend. So Saturday I spent the day washing, ironing, and fixing about five shirts, five or six shirts. I can't remember exactly. Yeah, so that's off the table, too. That counts. <laughs> did the mending, did the box, and then I have these three projects on the cutting table. Okay, enough of that. If you guys have any ideas how to keep my mind, you know, if I should draw it out, it'll look like a three-year-old drew it. I'm telling you, it's horrible. I'm not that much of an artist. Um, so the last thing that I want to bring up um, in the sewing section is we do have the video. We hit 2000 subscribers. We have the video up. I know in the past that we've done, um, I'm sorry, my eyes. I think I've got an eyelash. Um, we would take entries from all over. RJ would help me track them all. We would do Facebook and this and that. And this time it is just on YouTube. If you want to enter, there is, it says video entry. If I can learn to do cards, I'm going to start trying to add in cards and leave and link videos, but I don't know how to do that very well. So I am learning and I will try and do that. Um, so there is how to enter a special guest star. There is deadlines and dates all listed in that video. So if you guys want to get in on the entry um, or in the drawing, go ahead and just uh, pop over there and, and watch that little. It's super short compared to my others. All right. I think that's all I have for in the sewing section today. Um, 
let me know what your thoughts are about me popping around and changing. Um, because this skirt has been on the mannequin or on the table too long. It was a simple skirt. I should have been able to make the shell, do the thing, put some elastic in the top and be done. It's an elastic banded dress or skirt. Super easy. It has been on that mannequin for weeks. And then when I started working on it, I started altering it. It needs to be done. I'm going to try this weekend to get it done. So, yep, got to work. It's 730, so I better get off here. I will see you guys later. Um, don't forget to go over and put your entry in. And thanks for watching. See you next time.